Undulation and happy faces. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is Aqua Dome, and I am the one, the only Kendo Slice. This is MLE, brought to you by APM Music. Your content turned up, and it is more Master League action. By the way, I'm joined by Luke. Luke is back for another round of casting. Luke, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm here with my boy Kendo here. I'm super <laughs> excited. So we have a really fun match in store. It's on another Master League match. We just watched the previous one between the Shadow and the Dodgers. So it'll be very intriguing to see. Now we're going to the Blue Conference, which will be very intriguing, as we'll see the Master League Foxes versus the Master League Lightning. I almost forgot the Lightning there, but I didn't forget. <laughs> Yep, and I'm looking forward to it. A couple names that I do know, of course, I, we have Jay on the side of the Lightning. Jay, of course, going a little far back. Lightning, as we already know, 8 and 17. They're off to a rough start, but you can always change your fortunes. And, of course, every single game does matter within the confines of the MLE. So there is plenty of time for them to change their what they're doing against the Foxes squad that's 15 and 10. Like a 5-0 against a Foxes squad that's 15 and 10? You're putting them back to 500. You're putting yourself really close to 500. You gotta love it for the Foxes. Sergeant Mc50 Cal and Dravaco. 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 That's a very it's a very intriguing name to get used to, but you know, uh, it's gonna be very fun because it's actually very intriguing because you know, starting the season. Sergeant wasn't even on the Fox, he was on the um, Aviators, and a big mid-season trade happened on August 10th, where Sergeant got shipped over to the Foxes in return for Kramen, who was also a great player, but so far, looking at the record, it was a great roster move, and we're going to see if they can increase it here for them as they'll play the Lightning in a very good five-game series. Well, we will see as all players have slotted in there on the field, and we are about to get underway. Game number one between the Foxes and the Lightning, and right off the bat, Travaco. You know I'm going to enjoy this name quite a bit, my friend. Uh, you may see Vladimir come in and uh, start casting with you. It's going to be very, very fun. Yeah, don't expect an accent from me. I, I, I love you, Travaco, but I'm, I'm, I'm not as... Kendo's got the accent here. I'm going to let him be in charge of it. <laughs> Of course, wonderful Aqua Dome. You, you got plenty of bubbles. And Jay over here in a Merc, a man after my own heart. The first 30 seconds going to go by to no avail. Open net, though, for Sergeant Mc50 Cal. And he will score first blood. Yeah, definitely not the read. Jay was hoping for it. Expected a challenge there. He wasn't really looking at where the opponents were and just gave it away. And Sergeant, he was just waiting to punish. And he'll punish him right there. Early goal for the Foxes. Four minutes, 20 seconds left in game number one. First goal very early on for the Foxes and comes off a mistake by the Lightning. Only one shot so far. We'll see if Jay can pick something up and do something with it as Dravaco in the mid. And a deep hit away. So far, pace of play a little bit slower than I was expecting. And now Ma Master League, 1500 to 1650 on the MMR. So that it's going to be very interesting the amount of dynamic speed you're going to see at times for some of these teams. But you're also going to see teams that enjoy slowing it down and creating a little more calculation on their offense. Base base, able to keep that calculation out. And, you know, going back to your point, you know, I've been, I've always had the expense of playing with a lot of these guys, especially in four mans. And, you know, a lot of these players really like controlling the pace. They want to slow down and punish on counterattacks. And I definitely think we're going to see, we've seen a countless opportunities, especially by the Foxes there, as that one got saved out earlier. But definitely we're going to see a lot more passive play until later on in the series, most likely, when a team has a, goal, a series leader or a goalie. Here is Jay. We'll just keep this ball in the offensive zone for now. This is the retreat and Travaco. We'll ship it away. Jumped on by Sargent, and he's going to get a quick shot on May Space. Able to keep it away just for the time being. The Lightning definitely choosing to be on the back foot here early, but they have been steadfast on defense, saving four of the five shots. Credit to the Foxes, though. They're keeping everything on net. And it's definitely working out in their favor. I feel like right now the you know, Lightning are just trying to play too much of a defensive game. Like, they mean that... 
you know, the Foxes are going to overcommit, but it, you can just tell that this is just a high-level lobby. You're not going to be seeing many double commits or really rotational errors from this Foxes duo, especially when you have such a resume of a 15-10 and 10 record. Sargent gets a good 50-50, but it's hard to beat a Merc there in the corner. Okay, just going to take his time. Bring this out. Flips at the ball. Dravaco equal to the task. Orange is having a scrum over here on the side wall. Drew Vaco gets around and Sergeant McFifty Kill also gonna whip in the box and that is a missed opportunity. I mean, it feels like now no Fox is just still keeping the pressure. I do just feel like the Lightning are being suffocated in their own half time and time again. And the only way they need to get something going is by controlling the offense. It's a great opportunity off the bat board, but fall from Mace Face not on target. And that feels like a big opportunity sent to the wayside. Good 50-50. Sargent will send it back, and the Lightning once again on a retreat. They face around. And this communication with Jay. Jay is going to bring it up. Ceiling touch. Does get it across, but no one to receive it. They face going to take their time with this one. Lost it high. But Sergeant McFifty Cal will put that to the corner, and nobody with a follow up. Travaco is just able to walk this back. I just feel like mace has got a little oh. too up front, and instead they get punished for a great read from Travaka to center it there. And again, it just feels like a little bit too much of a passive play from the Lightning, and as a result, Foxes strike again. And it is really a tale of two game plans at the moment. The Lightning, they, they're okay with the idea of trying to create offense from their defense. They just haven't been aggressive towards the ball at all. That last goal, purely created by the aggression by Dravaco to create a 1v1 force of 50-50 and you're... In threes, you usually have another man back. In twos, however, you can create an opening just like that. Jay almost putting one in, but Sergeant McFifty Cal, he is a defensive wizard who is difficult to get around at times. Maybe it's the Merc hitbox, maybe it's the mentality he has. Because again, these two are star defenders. The only issue is when you have two star defenders, you have to have someone who's going to generate on the opposite side of the field. And right now we haven't seen it. 7-3 to three in shot count. And right now it just feels like the Foxes are controlling all the pace. Well, here's Jay. Jay looking to push this on. 16 seconds shot. It is Mace Face just missing. Trebacco stays hard in the net. Manages to keep it out, and it's going to be a long clear. They're in a need right now with seven seconds left. Sergeant McFifty Cal, the push away, and the Foxes are going to win game number one. That's a great showing from the Foxes. I definitely think, you know, at the beginning they were playing the same pace that we saw from the Lightning. And then once they got a bit further, and they're like, hey, they're giving us the space. Let's just use it to our advantage. And as a result, they took probably five shots in a row that were unanswered from the Lightning and two goals with it. Yeah, and it was a dynamic, the difference between these two teams. The Lightning early on, so much of what they were doing was playing defensively, playing on their heels. Even in the mid, they weren't necessarily contesting. They were just making sure they kept a man in between the ball and the net. And while I commend safe play and I commend a defensive mentality, in twos, you do have to be that little bit extra aggressive. Go forward. And the Foxes had a perfect example of that coming to fruit. Dravaco in the corner had the 1v1. Forces a great 50-50. And Sargent is there quickly to pick it up. The Lightning need a little bit of that in their lives. Some quick strikes. Some, you know, stormy domination on the pitch. But so far, we're under the sea. We're cool as a sea cucumber. And that doesn't seem like there's any storm warnings coming on. Probably not. I definitely think, you know, the foxes are really enjoying the snowy weather, not really getting worried to any thunderstorms coming by. But I definitely think, you know, if you are the lightning, your goal is make one of your players be an aggressor. Because we saw at the end of that game, Macy's was starting to turn on the aggression. Keep that going because when you had the aggression going, there was no offense from the Foxes trying to change the table to where one player is being an aggressor and while the other one's being a support. And they did double up their shots in that short period of time. So we're going to be looking for Mace Face to move forward, move up, keep the pressure going. And he's starting it out right here. He's going to grab the ball in the mid, taking his time, flies up the pass to Jay. It's Sergeant just barely keeping that out. But that is exactly what we're talking about in between games. 
And I definitely think right now this is what's going to really set the pace after the Foxes now. They're going to be like, whoa, we weren't expecting that coming out of the gate. So now it's going to see, will they continue the play style they had at the start of game one? Or are they going to change it up after the base of that one play we saw from the great passing play from the Lightning? Here's May's face. I'm going to throw this down towards the net. And on extra bump allows Jay the open net all day long. The Lightning strike first. And that's one thing I've always learned from, you know, Sargent from playing him a lot when I was in Master League is that he's a very player who doesn't, who really doesn't think about a lot of his touch, especially on the defense and on the field. So if you force him to give the ball away or force him to go for a touch that he's not ready for, you're going to give yourself better opportunities as we see it there. Mace forces a bad touch and it's a punish from the Lightning. This is a high lofter off of the backboard. Trevaco shot on. It'll be played by Jay, and now the Fox is dynamically on the back foot. Sargent's going to try to control this down. At least kill a little bit. The momentum takes advantage. The quick turn and scores back the other way. I love the turnaround here. He makes it think that Mayface has time, so Mayface goes for a slow turnaround. Makes him think he has all the time in the world to dribble it. And Sargent's like, I'm going to punish you and Jay for being overcommitted right now. And I'm going to get a great bang into the net. And that's a big equalizer as we're just under a minute. Well, now it's off the kickoff. Jay quickly showing off that Merc hitbox. Sargent gets it down. Dravaco will put another one to the backboard. And if there's a third man in this rotation, I mean, he would have been able to clean that one up. Sadly, no such luck. They will end up running dry. They uh, all headed back the other way. 324 on the clock. The Lightning kind of just throwing themselves at some of these possessions. It's allowing the Foxes to get back the other way quickly and get close to lethal on their shots. I do like Jay's kind of positioning on this. He's playing a lot more like that kind of third man rotation, even though there's two players, you know. I think that he's being a good defender as I say that, you know, missed read from him there and Sargent will get right over him. But, you know, I definitely think that Jay's doing a great job. I think now it's going to come down to if Mace Face can prevent these opportunities to appear so Jay doesn't have to save as much. Good old Sergeant McFifty Cal. I mean, he's definitely brought the extra magazines today because he is continuing to unload. Has all four goals in, or excuse me, all four goals in the series for the Foxes, there's the one on the side of the Lightning, which is impressive numbers, if you ask me. If you throw in the fact that he's just a bit of defensive powerhouse as well. Three saves so far. Not able to get that one, though. Jay finishes it off. I love the connections. They're looking for each other. You know, I know when Lightning strikes the ground, is this like what this is? You know, one's popping up, no one's striking in net. And I mean, that's a great passing play. You're looking for from the Lightning. It's just showing that, hey, we changed what we did in game one, and it just shows when you get to these higher levels of RL, it just shows the ability to adjust and make big changes that will help you dominate in a game. Also, one of my favorite things to do in the offensive set, not necessarily throwing stuff on the net, but it was exactly what Makespace did for that last goal, and that is flick it up off the backboard. There aren't as many people to defend the backboard in two, so it's a lot of fun to go there a little more often. You just have to be careful not to overcommit and to convert when you do. But now, the Lightning tied it up. Deuce is wild. We've seen Deuce is wild. 222, America's favorite call, and Jay interrupts it, grabs the next goal for the Lightning. And this kind of goes back to game one. You know, you think game one you know, would affect the mindset. And it really has here. Dravaco, a good example here. He thinks he has time because going off the game one, they had all the time in the world to do what they want, but instead Jay counters his ability to get boost and kind of rethink of what their play is and says, hey, you better not be sleeping on me because I'm going to strike you when you're not thinking. And it works again as now they're up by one. Oh, and here's Mace. Mace has a chance. Does not get the other one, but Jay able to finish it off in the box. Four and four. I mean, this is the passing place you are really for. Mace Case has a beautiful read off the backboard, and Jay is there right with the fall. I mean, this is the aggression we wanted to see in game number one, and it's like a complete table flip at this point. And now, the Lightning are dominating on the offensive side of the field. Well, let me reset that table for you. Try not to be that mad and aggressive. I understand, Luke, that things can be hard sometimes. As Dravaco, I mean, he's going to upset tables even more. Yeah, maybe he's the one putting it back for me. I mean, he's taking me back down to earth a little bit. I mean, that's a great placement from Dravaka. Realizes that Jay got a little awkward on the bounce, and 
puts it away. Definitely needed goal to kind of lower the lead with a little less than two minutes to go. Now off the kickoff, it will be Travaco. Almost gets a nice shot on net, but there is no follow-up for now. Sergeant up over it's gonna be barred down and out so close and with 90 seconds left i do love the flurry of urgency here from the foxes they want to tie it up early and definitely they were stuck on defense really getting punished i think now they're starting to realize hey we gotta rush a bit more of our touches and it's starting to work because they're really starting to get some offense going pulling out defenders left and right and now jay's off for oh. a big r2 for Dravaku, and it's off follows there and a big equalizer for the foxes well, Sergeant Mc50 Cal finally sees this one through. Travaco missing the initial touch, gets the pass for his effort. That's a kendo slice pass. If I've ever seen one, takes you back to a very, very old reference. We don't talk about those days. <laughs> I remember those days. I remember the classic days. But you know, this is the new era. I feel like of MLE. We're not back in the old days, but <laughs> the old times will still be around. I promise you, kendo is now. Now we're tied up again. We're going to see who's going to get the big, you know, go-ahead goal with less than a minute to go. I, you know what? It's the lightning. <laughs> what made you say that? Um, let me see your reasoning behind that kendo. Oh, you see, right here, Jay murks a man and then just walks the ball in. Like, that, that was a casual stroll in the park for the lightning, and it all started with Jay being aggressive. So... I think we've found the theme of our game here. Aggression pays off. We'll see who is the aggressor here with 45 seconds to go. The Foxes are looming once again. Dravaco will miss this initial touch in. And a great clear by Maceface does pay for it with his life. Foxes will be working this one back up. I do like the demo play, but I think the best way you're going to have a good opportunity is get the defender out of net with demos. We've seen Tr Sergeant, oh my, Sergeant the fit the cow, try it multiple times against him. Sorry for my mispronunciation there, but we see him get a good amount of demos here, and I think that's going to be their best chance to get something going on the offensive side of the field. Now it's a loose ball. Mace Base will get it to the corner. Dravaco needs to win the 50-50, doesn't go hard for it, and it's just going to loft back to the other side. Three, two, one, Jay the Shotty scores, and the Lightning are going to answer back with a game of their own. And I think this all comes down to the, the role change from both of these players from game one. Game one, they were both saying, hey, we're just going to play defense and be a passive player. But now this game, they're saying, hey, hey, Jay, I'm going to, or my Mace is saying, hey, Jay, I'm going to let you be the aggressor, finish everything, be the defender, do everything on the both at net but I'm going to be in the midfield controlling the game in the tempo. And it worked beautifully. They got lead after lead and were able to close it out there. And now they tie the series one to one. I think for the Foxes, I'd like to see a little more aggression out of Dravaco because right there at the tail end of things, he had the right pacing to actually throw himself at a great 50-50, which could have won it. I don't usually endorse throwing yourself at a challenge by any stretch of the imagination, Luke. But I will say it would have done him a lot of good right there because if he wins that 50-50 or even ties it, sends the ball back towards the mid, Sargent was there and ready to put that one away and it could have done them wonders instead. The slightest hesitation sees the ball back completely into the Fox's zone. They're not able to finish it. And I think, you know, it comes, and I agree with what you're saying, you know, a lot of way to be a defense is pull defenders out of net, make them get, pull them out of their comfort zone. We saw Jay really just stuck in net and like kind of in the place he wanted to be that whole game. If you're the Foxes, make him uncomfortable, make him make mistakes. When they came back and tied four to four, that's what they did. They made Jay uncomfortable in net and they just punished. So I think if you're Dravaco, you're the one who especially needs to show up and make the defense uncomfortable. I'd say you need to power a through the defense. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Sponsorship plugs and puns all at the same time. Only on MLE2. We can't do this on the main the mothership, ladies and gents. Anyway, Travaco, plenty of time as Jay's gonna miss out on this touch. Mace face will get this to the corner. And I like the control there. Forces the 50-50. Travaco might get the better of it. Drops it down. And Sargent's gonna be forced to take his time. 
They have a chance, but the long clear will finally come out and the Lightning will look to attack. I definitely think this is the best look we've seen. It's a light almost great play from Mace Face, not even like the read on target. But it's finally, you know, the pressure starting to come in. Now we're seeing a little bit of a role reversal from game one, where now the Foxes are trying to play a counter-attack game and punish the six from the Lightning. Here's Mace Face, doesn't need to put that one in. It was Jay out of the mid to finish. And this starts out with an excellent challenge by Mace Face. Ends up getting it center for Jay, who is just waiting in the middle. First one to the ball. And that's how important winning challenges can be. Because if you can beat your opponent to the ball, you gain a lot of priority to really bamboozle them. Especially in twos, more often than not, than not, than not you are trying to play shadow defense. You're trying to play defense from behind. And it doesn't work out very well. So priority is all the more important in this game mode. And I definitely think, you know, going back to what you said, you know, I feel like it feels like, you know, the, the Lightning are doing what I, we're wanting the, the Foxes to do. They're pulling the Foxes defenders out of net and playing them in awkward positions. We saw Sargent very awkward in these situations. And we've seen it constantly time and time again so far throughout these first few minutes that he just doesn't really know where to be on the field. Same with Travaco. And they're just literally giving the Lightning space to do whatever they want now. Well, here's Jay. He's making space to do whatever he wants. Is, this is going to be put up by Mace Face. Jay with a chance. Can he get around it? No. Decides to go for the boost. I'm not sure if he got it there. He might have. I think he did. It's going to be an open net opportunity made in part due to this boost win. And Mace Face keeping the pressure. That's a great 50 from Mace Face. He covers the clear out, so Dervaco thinks he has to get it out through like the post, and instead he nails it off the post, and it goes right back out to Jay to finish. And those are just those be putting your opponents in a really confusing situation where Dervaco didn't know what to do. There was no way out. And as a result, Jay fills in his role, gets the finish he needs, and lightning back up by two. Now this ball high lofted and I, I tell you what, I, I just had that realization as we go through halftime. The Lightning are up two again. And they desperately need some wins. And what better team to do it against than these Foxes? They're in the driver's seat right now, but they find themselves on the back foot. Sergeant, mercy. That's a great way. You know, it's like they catch Jay a little up front and Sergeant. Now, having this mechanical ability that he does being one of the higher salary players in the league, he realizes where the defender was misplaced and gets a beautiful flick over where he can't recover. And now lead back down to one. Definitely needed for the Foxes. Well, here's Jay. Will get a push into his corner. Sergeant going to look for control. Both committing here. Mayspace just needs to get it to the side. The Foxes forced to regroup. He can control it out. Eats out the commit from Sargent. Now they're on the back foot. Shot towards the net. It will be saved away, but the Lightning will gain the midfield. The demo is going to alleviate a little bit of pressure, but the win of the challenge here leaves a chance if he can get the ball center for Jay. The shot will be saved by Dravaco just barely. That's a great you know, steeping your ground is something really hard to do when you're stuck in those mid-net situations. You don't know where the shot's going to go. And he holds his ground beautifully to get that save out. And now, they keep the lead at one, but they still need to get something going on offense. I mean, there was so much going on in that play as well. Base Base, credit to him. He stalled that ball on the wall as long as possible. And now the Lightning getting another chance. Jay almost able to power through. He almost murked the defense again. Will not come to fruit here. Sergeant will try to carry this all the way down. It will be Dravaco towards the mid, and the Lightning will take possession. 45 to go. And you know, now it comes down to this Fox. They finally get a situation here where they get the defense in an awkward spot. Sean won't be on. But it's just showing the Fox is finally getting that pressure they've been wanting all game. But they can't get anything to go with it. And now we're going to see, will one player be able to make the difference and get this equalizer? Very good question, my friend. I'm not sure it's going to be one player. I think it needs to be a team effort. But we have 17 seconds to find out, and then the Lightning have cleared all the way down. It's going to start with Dravaco. Dravaco 
Trying to get around Jay. Has the lightning on the back foot. Sargent's going to pick this up. Can he get up and over? No. He's going to loft. Can Travaco? No, he won't be able to. The lightning are going to pull off the win and keep the lead going into game three. And I mean, if you watch game one and you thought this was going to come, I would have never expected this. It is literally like a storm. It's like a thunderstorm, you know. Growing up in growing up in Florida, I grew up all around these, and it always took a time for the storm to get formed. And you know, that's what the lightning have been. They took a while to form game one. You know, they're getting their feet, the little pass is taking their time. But the game two and three, they were striking with power and momentum because the way they've been playing these last couple games has been beautiful. Maze Face being the really the playmaker and really the one who's causing issues on the defensive end for the Foxes. And then Jay's just being that, as you say, he's murking the defense time and time again, not only in net, but on offense as well as he punishes them with two crucial goals to win that game. I think the dynamic has changed now from both teams are not quite aggressing the way they should to now that we have both teams initiating, they're aggressing, they're putting their best foot forward. We're seeing where the lack is for the Foxes. And right now, we're calling on Dravaco. Dravaco needs to step up for his squad because literally you look at the amount of goals. There's only one goal that doesn't belong to Sarge. I need a yeah. little bit more involvement from the second man on the Foxes roster going into this game number four. And I think he feels the pressure as well. It doesn't necessarily need to be shots on net body a man make a man miss show me that 50 50 game that we saw in game number one that's what i want to see team content going into game number four for sure you know this two is such more of a team game than people believe it is and that's almost a great way to start the great passing play great save by jay but it really is going to come down to dravaku taking really the rule that may see so he needs to be the one who's allowing sergeant to take control and offense get the looks he wants but we haven't seen it since game number one and Hopefully they'll be able to turn around in game number four. Well, the Foxes will be slowly bringing this up. It'll be Jay. Ditches to the corner. And Sarge will take his time with that ball. Now the Foxes, they're almost looking stationary at the moment. I, I, I felt like I was observing a Minecraft building seminar rather than a game of Rocket League there for a second. Four minutes, six seconds on the clock. Both teams scoreless. Only one shot on the board so far. Foxes just taking their time. They're letting the Lightning try to make mistakes. Letting the Lightning have their way, but also just waiting on the right mistake. They're not following up balls the way I would like to see them follow. But Sergeant, here is a pass. Dravaco, it's your golden moment shot. Saved by Macefakes. Gets it to the corner. It just seems like Dravaka is panicking so many touches. He has the space, but he just keeps giving it away like it's food. I don't get, understand, you know, this isn't a buffet. You're trying to make as many as you can get and take all the food you can, but he's not taking the opportunities and making the most with them because he just gives it away once again to the Lightning. Well, Dravaka giving away the ball, as you did mention, my friend, but will force a 50-50. That ball almost in. Face Face doesn't get credit for a save, but he did in my heart. This is going to drop for Dravaco. Jay will take him completely out of the picture. And now the Lightning will try to corral the electricity in the mid. Not going to be able to do it for now, though. Quickly in is Dravaco. I am liking the pressure he is adding in the midfield right now. It's creating a lot more for the Foxes and specifically Sarge to work with. Does he get it? Yes, he does. The Foxes first blood. And Sarge is always the most deadliest when you give him the space to do what he wants. He, when I when I played against him, he was always a player. If he had space, you just have to panic because he's going to punish. Because look at that right there. He's a beautiful fake air dribble to get past Jay. And that's the thing we need from Dravaco. Allow Sarge to have the space to do what he wants. Allow him to set up these air dribbles, these dribbles, and anything to mess up the defense. And it works there as they finally get a lead that they have not seen probably since game number one. Well, we're going to see if the Lightning are able to respond quickly because the last thing you want to do is bring a chessboard to a rocket-powered battle car match. As these two teams 
slowly but surely positionally duking it out and i'd like to see a little more urgency out of them both the lightning i mean their season could be greatly affected by a win or a loss here with the 8 and 17 record that they have so far in the foxes i mean you don't want to go down when you're already up five games 15 and 10 you got to defend the dead if i remember that being the old hashtag adage in a long time ago galaxy far far away <laughs> oh well never be forgotten that's all that matters but you know you go back to this series and it just feels like you know, the Lightning, even though they're losing, it feels like they're still controlling a lot more of the pace than it feels like. You know, again, they don't have a shot yet, but it feels like a lot more that they're still getting opportunities to really turn the ball around. They just need that one opportunity to strike, which might come here. With one minute, 17 seconds, literally 75 of those single counting references finally may space is gonna put this in i think there was a bump here by jay that's a great one two punch jay gets a beautiful pull sergeant out net makes some panic gives it away and man and javaka just not able to read enough well, almost looked like jay got in his peripheral view and messed him up that's just a great team play again from the lightning and now it is a tie game anyone can pull off the win here but a quick reaction may space another shot towards the net Sargent to keep it away. The Foxes looking to keep priority in the offensive zone. It's Sargent off the backboard and quickly back are the Lightning. I'm loving the speed. Jay shot towards the net. It'll careen off the backboard and played away by Sarge. Long shot. Goal. Nice transition here by Sarge. This man is just a striker. He is the catalyst for this offense and he does it again. His ability to be aware of where everyone is on the field is just amazing. He knows when to control. He knows when to take power shots. He's just all over the field on really where everyone is. And again, he punishes them again and Reed gives the Fox the lead. Very crucial in this game four. Well, Dravaco across for Sarge. Sarge is gonna trap it down. Dravaco, the shot. Jay able to keep it away, doesn't get a save. But you know he did save it. May space. Trying to get around the ball. Down for Jay. It'll be saved by Sarge. Taking away the chance. Jay needs to get around this ball fast. Cannot do so. And Trevaco carries it all the way down. 15 left. The Lightning need to go the distance. And the Foxes have ball possession. It'll be a ditch back into the offensive zone. Face face. Can't stay with it. Sarge puts it around the corner. Gets the 50 win. Foxes are going to go on to take this to a natural game number five. At least we don't have to say this is a fourth game five series like we did last series. You know, this is a very big series, especially if you're the Lightning. You know, you're last in your division. And making a statement like this, not just, you know, on this records, but making it like a personal statement saying, hey, we may be last in our division, but we're still showing we're here because we're yeah. being the best team in another one is such a great statement for teams like the Lightning. Well, and these cross-divisional matches are always so important, Luke, because you have that opportunity to outperform the rest of your division. You could be the weakest team in your division, but then go 20-0 and 0 against the out-of-division teams in interconference play and go on to the playoffs. You know, that's it's an amazing thing. Every single game is important. Every single score is important and the lightning are taking that to heart right here i'd love to see them get a win here take it to 10 or excuse me they already are at 10 wins i'd love to see them take it to 11 and 19. that would be a great start here after starting this day 8 17. i definitely you know this is the mentality they want to have you know when, when you get this one the season especially after your divisional matches i can say firsthand and i believe you can too kendo you know you always have this mindset like oh we're not good enough because our division's better than us but you know when you have these success against some of the best teams in the rest of your conference it says hey we're still one of the best teams here and we can perform and it just shows here they're trying to do it but we're gonna see who's really gonna shine in this game number five yeah, my friend i have been on the losing side of the best divisions in the history of the mle and i've been on the winning side of the best divisions in the history of mle the fact is it makes you want to better at least that's the way it helped me because it's like every single game so important 
And for the Lightning, you're seeing this sense of urgency. They were so close. Travaco stands strong in the net. And he's going to get this ball all the way back down. And I love Dravago has some of the best patience. I've seen his ability to just not lose focus and panic on the goal line is amazing. We've seen it last game, we've seen it this game. When even if it's a very, you know, crucial game five, he's like, hey, I know what you're gonna do, and I'm gonna just wait and figure out a way to get this out of our net and really try and get a counterattack kill. Here's Jay. The quick pickup is gonna stick it to the side. Loses control for now, but I do like the misdirection play there. He was still able to chase after it. Needs to chase after Sargent, though. Sargent's going to see this ball all the way down. Great control here. Again, this is just Sargent. He knows the situation. He realized, hey, I don't need to rush what I'm doing. And he's able to punish off a great play from Dravaka. Gets a good bump on the last defender who's rotating back. And Sargent just has to, you know, he didn't want to make it a little too fancy. But, you know, me loving my boy Sargent, I was hoping, you know, maybe add a little bit to it. Well... We are just about two minutes through game number five, and the Lightning desperately in need of a response. The Foxes, they are just continuing to turn it on. Sergeant, are you kidding me? Dravaka unable to make the finish, and Mayspace will make go down as the hero of this match if they are able to tie it up and come from behind. And that is major. You know, we, I was getting a little worried that we're starting to see a repeat of game number one. You know, a little bit of panic and passiveness due to this being such a big game for him in their season. But Mace is just keeping calm and collected. He's making the place necessary to keep his team in this. And they're going to have a chance. He has a great air dribble. Not able to get past the last defender. And Jay again caught out of position. And it's not going to be looking good for the Lightning as they're down 2-0. Dravaka with his second goal of the series at 222. If you don't believe in numbers, there's something wrong with you. Because, <laughs> I mean, I believe in numbers and in magic in a young girl's heart. And at this point, the Foxes have created a very rough scenario for the Lightning to go through to get this victory. But I guarantee the storm has not been quelled yet. Storm never ends. It's always some that lasts around. It depends on where you are, because there's sometimes oh, when the storm oh, comes oh. and goes, but it seems like it's lasted a little bit longer. The Lightning finally get one back. See, this is a power play. Make space. Sees there's only one man back. Ah, oh, I missed touch that ball. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna not only knock this ball, I'm gonna demo the last man back at the same time. Great job by the Lightning. They cut the lead in half, but Dravaco gets a third goal for his series here. And he has really taken over this game. He has a great kickoff. Reads where Mace Face is going and cuts a little to the left to get that dunk. And Jay just not able to respond. Dravaco, wouldn't you believe Kendo? He's being the star that we need him to be. I mean, I'm glad to finally see it, my friend. I am glad to finally see it. And I know the Foxes fans in the chat are very happy to as well. I mean, Sarge, offensive effort has been spectacular today to the tune of nine goals in these five games. Granted, we're not completed yet. I'd love to see him rounded out with a tenth here. You know, just for, you know, solid even numbers. Those odd numbers are weird. <laughs> You might get your wish. So let's do this out of way and see. Sergeant makes goals out of everything. So we'll see what he's able to do here. I definitely think if you're the Lightning, I want to see a bit more from Dre as Dravaco oh. does it again. And this man's got a hat trick. He's got more goals this game than he has the whole night so far. Yeah, he is feeling it right now. And he has put the team on his back here in game five. You know, better late than never. And I say that with all due respect. He has turned it on and impressed everybody, both in the viewership and here in the Caster's booth. This really makes you think, what are the Lightning going to do response? Feels like Jay's really gotten a little quiet on offense. Not getting a good shot here either, but maybe trying to get set up. I definitely think, you know, the Lightning got to figure something else out on the offensive end, or else this really might go down to a 2-3 loss. Oh. So there's your 10th goal, by the way, Kendo. There it is. Oh. But, you know, they say silence is golden. 
That does feel, that sounds very golden. I gotta agree with you, that sounds very golden. <laughs> it was a really, really, it wasn't a needed touch, but Sarge got it anyway. One minute remaining, the lightning, they're gonna need a, a supercell to put this one back in reach, and they're gonna need it right now. Mayspace really fumbling on the goal line. Sarge will put it through. However, 2v1, we'll see if Maceface can get it around to Jay. Jay a little too far forward, and Dravaco still able to get the touch on this. It's another one as well. That one will be sent all the way down. Now it's 30 seconds to do it with. Not very likely, my friend. And hey, it's going to be very hard. You know, it felt like the Lightning had this series after the first games two and three. But, you know, they finally, when you, we came down to the bright lights, you know, you see this all the time, especially when you're casting your boys, the Pioneers, you know, it always comes down to how are they going to show up in game number five. And it just showed that the Lightning, the stage got a little too bright for them. And it seems like they're going to get, you know, shut out here. Well, it was an amazing effort from the Lightning. But the Foxes end up coming out with the majority, the lion's share of the games, the lion's share of the pride going into this one. They also had the lion's share of the shots. You're going to look back at this one and be like, Dravaco showing up in game number five made a gigantic difference because once he was on top of his game, the Lightning weren't able to adjust. And you love to see it from a spectator's point of view when someone is having a rough go of it and then turns it on at the very end. You know, and I definitely, you know, this is going to be so important when it comes to later in the season, especially something like playoff times, which a team like the Foxes, they're in a great spot to do. You know, now they're win 3-2. They're going to be 18-12 and 12 now in their division. A huge lead for them over the rest, and it's going to be really important. But I definitely think for Dravaco, this is a big statement for him saying, hey, when times get tough by the end of this season and I'm going to be showing in the playoffs, I'm going to show that, hey, I'm going to show up to the biggest stages when you need me to. And he showed it here tonight, and it's definitely well-earned for him. Well, sadly, you know, all good things do have to come to an end. And, you know, you've seen the games come to an end. And I, you'd love seeing the beautiful face over there. I mean, just look at it. Uh -huh. Okay, you, you made, oh wait, I'm on the wrong side. You made my heart bleed, man. I'm sorry, I'm not used to this thing as much as you are, but <laughs> <laughs> but I have been enjoying casting alongside you, you know, and casting always tears at Emily is always a blessing. No matter what league it is, you know, this is a developmental league for anyone out there who wants to improve with the game, especially a twos, you know, so that's not really played much on the professional level. So, you know, want to get your name out there on a twos level, this is the place to do it. So definitely mm -hmm. sign up. 100% and it would not be a proper development if we did not continue to enforce and enthuse folks about our sponsors. So let's do a quick roundup one more time for everybody. <laughs> a special thanks to all our sponsors. Power A, you can check them out, PowerA.com. The Fusion Pro Controller. I mean, why pay over $100 for an Xbox Elite when you can get almost the same exact thing for a much cheaper price. Check that out, the Fusion Pro. And of course, there are giveaways over on the main channel. Stay tuned for that raid because, you know, we, we always want to get in on the giveaways for that. Of course, Balls Garana. There's nothing quite like the smooth, refreshing taste of a Balls Garana. And they are the sponsors of our Play of the Week. If you see anything at all, whether it be on this stream, whether it be on the other stream, clip it. Send it in because that could be the ball's play of the week. Your favorite player could walk home well, and find a case of refreshing balls Garana at their doorstep due to winning the play of the week. Forge Coaching, special thanks to our partners over there. If you are looking for coaching at a very affordable price, Forge will take members of the Rocket League community. They have amazing people who can coach you at any level. At just about any price, I might add. It's very affordable. They're very cordial. You're going to absolutely love it. And it's an opportunity to improve your game even more. And of course, the notated sponsor of MLE currently. Thank you to APM Music. Your content turned up, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go ahead and raid the main channel. I hope you all have a wonderful night.